we are all creatures of comfort. We love being nice and warm with our central heating on, having a nice cup of tea while sat watching TV. Modern life has many conveniences. We can just hop in the car and drive five minutes to the shops to get dinner. But is there a flip side? What is the cost of our comfort? Are these daily conveniences actually having an effect on things such as the climate? I think I need to talk to some scientists who know more about this topic. I'm here at the Open University to see what I can find out. Kate, you study climate change. Are humans actually changing the climate? Well, yeah, climate has changed a lot in the past hundred years and that's been seen all over the world, really. And just in the past few years, global temperature records keep being smashed because it's just getting warmer and warmer. But I thought that climate change is naturally. Hasn't it been a lot warmer than this in the past? Well, yeah, you're totally right. And that's actually something that my research is about. So if we look at it on a geological time scale, there have been many times in the past few million years where it's been quite a lot warmer than it has been today. So there are various natural forces, which could be volcanic eruptions, changes in the sun's energy, or even on longer time scales, plate tectonic movements, which all um, control global temperature changes. Um, and it's mostly the result of resulting changes in carbon dioxide. But we can actually use these past warm periods to try and help us understand what our future world could look like if our CO2 levels continue to increase. So if it's been a lot warmer than this in the past, how do we know that humans are actually the cause? So yes, there are many things that affect climate naturally, so that's what we see in the geological record. But the recent temperature changes increase in line with our carbon emissions. So that comes from things like agriculture and air travel, because CO2 is the key driver. And these other natural processes just can't explain the warming. OK, so humans are having an impact. But if this temperature change has happened before, what exactly is the problem now? Well, what's happening today is quite different, actually. So the rate of recent climate change is significantly faster than what we would see just from the natural forces. So as you can see in this graph here of temperature through time, there's been a dramatic increase in temperature just over the most recent few decades compared to the wider geological context. And it's particularly clear here over the past thousand years. And it's got to the point where many environments simply can't keep up because there's just no real time to adapt or evolve as they would have done in these previous warm periods because these changes would have happened gradually over tens of thousands or even millions of years. And it's actually really difficult for us to predict what might happen in terms of future temperatures because um, it really does depend on our carbon emissions. But scientists are cry trying to create models um, using some of this past climate change data to try and predict what our world could look like. So Kate's shown us that we are having an effect on climate through human comforts such as jetting off on holiday and driving our cars. But is this actually having an effect on the environment? I'm going to talk to an expert outstanding in her field, quite literally. Hi Mel. Why have you got four sticks on the floor? Can you tell me what you're measuring? Hi Jasmine, yeah, what I'm doing is uh, a small vegetation survey out in this field. So what I've got here are four sticks that are all a metre long um, that makes them very portable and easy and low tech. And I can just put them out like this and it gives me one metre square and then I can take that one metre square with my four sticks, put them anywhere and I've got a nice standard unit of measurement for doing a vegetation quadrat survey. So is it just the rainfall that's affecting these plants? No, not at all. We're also seeing changes in other environmental inputs, so pollutants, some of the nitrogen compounds that come from vehicle emissions or agricultural fertiliser inputs. Now nitrogen's important for plants to be able to grow and develop properly, and some plants would be fine with this. They'll do really well. Some of the grasses, for example, they'll be able to expand their ranges and invade new areas and push out subsidiary species. Um, but some plant species just won't like it at all. The legumes, for example, uh, the pea family, like clover, which is an important forage crop, they really just don't like nitrogen. And so we stand to see those being lost from habitats like this grassland. 
leading to an overall reduction in biodiversity. So am I right in thinking that in some cases there's just too much of a good thing? Yes, that's right. But it's not just about the degree and direction of this change. It's also about the rate of change. Because it's happening so quickly, some species just aren't going to be able to adapt fast enough, if at all. Um, and so we stand to lose those from some of the plant species communities, which leads to habitat loss eventually. OK, thanks for the information, Mel. I'll leave you to it. So it's not just climate change. We've heard how comfort such as driving our cars is also having a direct effect on the environment. But how are we trying to mitigate these effects? Hi David, wow that looks amazing, is that what you're working on? Hi Jasmine, um, so I work on primates and I'm particularly interested in how they move around and get about in their environment. Oh okay, so am I right in thinking that's a chimpanzee? That is indeed a chimpanzee, or at least it used to be, but now it's a computer model of a chimpanzee. I heard that our comforts are affecting the environment, but is that the same for animals such as chimpanzees? Yeah, so actually uh, as a zoologist it's really important that we preserve these animals and we are having an impact on their habitat. So the biggest issues are things like coffee plantations and the meat industry and palm oil as well. So uh, it's really important that we try and preserve these animals genetically by keeping them in zoos and also allowing us to educate the public about them. Oh right, so that sounds like quite a good thing for these animals then, is, is that right? Yeah, so uh, obviously genetically speaking they're preserved but we are actually now realising we need to consider things about their behaviours, so particularly like their locomotor behaviours, um, which we're not actually managing to get right at this moment. Right, so why is it that we aren't preserving their behaviours at the moment then? Well, we can only replicate their natural environment so far, it's actually quite difficult. And the problem with chimpanzees is, given the opportunity, just like us, they'll sit around, eat the food that's available and be rather lazy. In fact, they're creatures of comforts just like you and I. So part of my research is trying to understand how we can motivate them to move around in their environment in a much more natural way and hopefully reduce uh, the prevalence of things like osteoarthritis, which is now becoming a big problem. Great. Thanks, David. Thanks, Jasmine. Our need for comfort is having many effects on the world we live in. We've just heard how some scientists are already finding ways in which we can reduce our impact. But to be successful, perhaps we all need to chip in and do our part. Do you know what? I think I'll walk today.